We want to welcome everybody to our first uh, meeting of the new order, if you will. My name is Randy Barth. Uh, you might know me at the park uh, with Chewy. And I want to welcome you as the president of the Friends of Chelmsford Dog Park. So thanks for coming. We know all of you anyway, and but I'm also speaking to some folks at home. Uh, we are recording this and we're taking notes and we're going to post everything up on the website. So for those of you who know people who couldn't make it, let them know. and. Um, we'll have this up for them. Some little housekeeping notes um, for people who are at home. There's a chat box for you. And if you want to just put a chat in there, you can uh, for the things that you want to make sure that we hear about. Um, also, we're going to keep this to one hour. So want to make sure that everybody realizes that, that um, we're going to try to keep this to one hour. And then after, we'll mingle for about half an hour after that. Our goal of this is for you to in be introduced to the new board. And tonight, it's not going to be uh, a total um, discu two-way discussion, if you will. You're going to definitely get your notes in and your wishes in. What we want to do is we want to poll everybody and find out what do they want, what do you want from the park, and to make sure that you have enough information so when you're at the park, you can talk to other people and find out what their goals are um, you know, for making this um, the best park that we can. So tonight, we want your great ideas and your questions and your concerns. That's what we're looking for. And we're going to present what we have gathered in the last few months. And then after tonight, we're going to gather all your ideas and questions. We'll work with you one-on-one, -on -one and we'll work on the Facebook page, and we'll schedule our next meeting um, probably in two months from now. And we'll um, have a more of a, a discussion meeting. Uh, but right now, we're just trying to gather everybody's ideas, and that's what. And we want to know. We want you to know what our ideas are as well. Um, as always, we are pr putting uh, my email address for anybody to email me at any time. So it's Randy at Randy Barth at Friends of CDP org. That's a mouthful. Um, you'll see this on up there tonight uh, on a couple of places. And of course, we're at the park all the time. So please come over and talk to us and say, hey, we were thinking and whatever, and we're gonna make sure we're constantly registering that. So we wanna make sure that you always have our ear for this park. And the last thing that I wanna say at this place is transparency. This board is about making sure that you know everything that we're doing. That's why we're broadcasting this. We wanna make sure that this thing is um, this park is going forward in the best light possible with everybody, including you, on our team. So keep that in mind. Okay. So right now, we're going to meet the board. Okay. Um, as I said, my name is Randy. I'm the president. These are our roles, but trust me, we don't really care about <laughs> what the roles are. You'll see me uh, elbow into the dog poop, cleaning dog bags. So. You know, there's, even though I have a position here, we're all even. Um, I couldn't even do half of this stuff without the, the board that I have here. So my name's Randy, and we'll go down there. Um, I'm Paul, you can see me at the dog park. I do the morning uh, dog park things. I'm Lauren, I've got Sawyer, and I'm there most afternoons. I'm Jared, I have Quinn Husky. I'm there most afternoons as well. You see me on the weekends, uh, working with these guys. And I'm Carly, my dog is Lando. You guys probably see me every day down at the dog park. So those are the pep people on the board. Now we're gonna introduce some of the team players. Um, they're not all here. So Carly, if you wanna talk a little bit about yeah. our team. So um, since forming uh, Friends of Chelmsford Dog Park, um, we've taken on a lot of the responsibility around maintenance and uh, day to day operations of the park, which includes um, the Facebook page that, that we have, Chelmsford Dog Park Facebook page. Um, and so we have some new moderators for the Facebook page uh, Matt, uh, Lauren is the moderator, and Michelle Lee, who was, is the moderator of Chelmsford Dog Park 2.0. Um, so, really, our, our two Facebook groups are starting to merge. Um, we'll probably have more moderators as we go along because um, the activity level of the Facebook page has just gone up and up, and um, and we've seen a lot of engagement. So, we're probably going to add a couple of additional moderators. So, if anyone is interested, just reach out to me. Um, we have Instagram, um, which Jared's going to talk about. Uh, the helpers, um, the other helpers for the Chelmsford Dog Park are what I call our ambassadors. We have people like 
Brendan, um, we have Randy, we have, um, well, there's so many of the names, Jackie, um, let's see, who else, Deb. People walking around the dog park doing whatever it takes to keep the dog park going. Um, somebody filled in all the holes in the dog park uh, without us knowing, which was awesome. <laughs> there's, some, there's someone who goes around the dog park every day and cleans up dog food. So that's amazing. We have Rachel, you know, she's um, working on our events and fundraising. We have Lisa, who is taking charge of our newsletter, which will be published. Um, we have Mark, who is our grounds manager. And um, Mark, yep, raise your hand. hand there. <laughs> and a lot of other people. I mean, I, I'm trying to think as I'm sitting here of all the people who've been helping us um, since the Friends of Chums Dog Park uh, was formed. And you know, it's, it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see so many people giving, um, donating, and participating. So if you're interested in participating and being one of our park angels or our park ambassadors, and I think we'll talk more about that. Um, just let me know. So we want to thank everybody. Um, let's talk about our charter, yep. uh, what we're um, looking to do. We've got the new um, order up there. Yep. So Carly, you can keep going. All right, so um, a lot of folks have been asking us about the, the split between the boards. And um, we thought this was a really good opportunity to just um, talk about it because I know emails have gone out and people are like, why do we have the CDA and why do we have the Friends of Chumster Dog Park? Well, there are actually three boards. There's the DPAC, which is the governing body. It's the town organization, the, the town board. And they are, they are the umbrella over the two boards, which are the CDA and the Friends of Chelmsford Dog Park. And essentially, what we have is a wonderful dog park that was established through a lot of hard work um, by people who got the land, you know, and did all the fundraising, got the grants and all of that, and establish this wonderful dog park but you know as years go by the demands increase and you know you start to think about all of the things that need to be done and you know you start getting away from other things that you might want to do so a discussion was had where they decided that okay what was our charter you know um, what was the CDA's charter and the charter had been to educate and do outreach and so they thought well what if we split the two boards and have a board that focuses on the maintenance and day-to-day -day operations, giving um, the CDA time to do the outreach and the education and the training. And so that's what we agreed to in December. Um, and it's, you know, someone at the dog park said it perfectly to me. They said, it's two sides of the same coin. We're all serving the same purpose. We're all serving the dog park. And the intention is for us to work together Collaborative, collaboratively with the board um, to make sure that all the park goers understand that this is all being done for the benefit of the community and for the dogs and for the park goers. Um, it's important to note that every penny that we raise for Friends of Chelmsford Dog Park is going to the dog park. We are only spending that on the day-to-day -day maintenance, the things that the park needs, repairs, um, and any additional things that we want for the park. We want to be as collaborative as possible with everyone in the dog park. If people are donating money to us, we want them to understand that we want to invest in things that matter to all of the dog park owners. Uh, goers. So what we'll do is we'll put up surveys and say, hey, do you think we need a porta pot? Do we need it for the year? Do we need it for half a year? Do we not need it at all? and try to get a consensus because you know we don't want to do it in a vacuum. We want to make sure that whatever money people give us is going towards what they, they want it to go towards, whenever possible. Um, the park itself, I, this is probably one of the most exciting things to me. When, when I was running for the board, the one thing I said was that I wanted to make the dog park a destination. And what's really exciting is, um, I don't know how many of you live in Chelmsford, but Chelmsford has an aggressive master plan to build out Chelmsford and make it walkable Chelmsford. And in that plan, they're also putting up a lot of new um, luxury apartments and condos. These places don't have property. They don't have, you know, yards and things like that. And so what was really exciting to see was that the new building that they put up, the Gristmill building, um, they actually advertised to all of their owners and tenants the Chelmsford Dog Park. 
So that's pretty cool when you have a developer advertising on dog park. So it is becoming a destination. Uh, there are two new buildings that are, I think, going up um, in the spring in the center of Chelmsford, that being the Oddfellows building and the Fisk House building. Those are going to be remodeled into additional housing units. So we're going to see more people coming to the dog park. So this is a great time to get make people aware of the dog park, get involved, and make the dog park everything we want it to be. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. And we're going to move on to the budget. So um, when we divided into two entities, we came together, uh, we got the information from the original entity, which is the CDA, and we grabbed all the numbers. So here is what um, we have for our budget. I'm going to turn this over to Lauren. Lauren, you'll need to speak up so our friends at home can hear. Sure. Fantastic. So most of the numbers are based on information that was passed on from us from the CDA. Uh, we've got some regular expenses. Electric runs roughly $50 a month for a total of $600 a year. We're estimating that water usage would be about $400 a month. We use a year. Or excuse me, a year. Food um, bags, if you buy them by the case, we get them for approximately $134 each. These are the bigger rolls that are easier to dispense and don't have to be put in on a daily basis, but more on a weekly or a bi weekly basis. Uh, the barrel liners, trash can liners. One of the things, as Carly mentioned, we hold people on whether or not a porta potty is something that is important. And I have a entire porta potty spreadsheet. And $160 <laughs> is the best price I could get. Um, that would be the same price six months or 12 months, so we can make a decision. But that's a $960 expense, so we need to be thoughtful. We have a lot of people interested in having it there for the summer months when people are spending more hours drinking fluids. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some fixed costs like having a PO box and some insurance that we are required to carry for events. Um, we will be talking grounds and maintenance. I'd like to put in some savings for a new tractor. So hopefully if we're making enough money, we can put several hundred dollars a year aside so that when the traffic finally goes to put, we will have money available to purchase a new one. There's always um, equipment like extra weed whackers and the screens and stools, gasoline, oil change, things for the tractor, seed, fertilizer that we're going to be adding to the budget. Um, but we've made a commitment as a board to have all of this information on the Friends of the Chelmsford Dog Park website, open and public for everybody to take a look at. All right. What's up? Very good. Do you have any questions? Yeah, there are going to be more line items, and there are, um, those will all be published. So by the time our next meeting, we're going to have all of that available to you on our site. Let's talk about uh, membership and donations. Um, so our membership, we have decided that we want to do this just once a year. So instead of having your membership start when you, you know, uh, throw in some, uh, your membership dues, it's going to be anytime you um, you can join anytime you want. But April first through April 1st will be the donation period, I mean the uh, membership period. So what we're going to try to do is have our next meeting just before our membership drive so that we can get people out there to know it. The other thing that we want to do with our members is the members are going to get to pay what they want. So we're going to show what memberships should be. So an individual should be this and a family should be that. But if you have a dollar and you want to become a member, then put in a dollar. If you have a hundred dollars, and you want to be a member, you put in a hundred. So we want members, and we want members, you know, to be part of our family. So that's what we're going to be doing with our membership drive, and it's not going to be, a, you know, all throughout the whole year. If you pay on March, your membership's good through April 1st. So you'll renew on April 1st. This way we can keep all the names in the database uh, and all the members in a single cycle. So that's what our goal is. 
And the same is similar with the donations. Um, we're going to be, of course, doing uh, fundraising and things like that, but on the site, we're going to have line items that you can donate. Because I know a lot of people want this porta potty. If they want it all year, they're going to know we got to raise $960. So if you want to give $300 to the porta potty, that gets us down to $660. And if you, you know, so if you're into the porta potty, go for it. <laughs> it's going to be there for you. Um, and so we want to have a system where you pay, you donate toward what you want. And we feel that's going to uh, create some really goodwill out there for the people um, coming to the park. Hello. So that's a little bit about our membership. Um, at this point, I want to say that our board is just getting all of the wheels going. Okay, so just be patient for another month. The website's going to look a lot better in a month. It looks great now. Thank you, Paul. Uh, we're going to do a little quick tour in a second of the website, but we're just getting our feet under us because the first couple of months um, that, that we were into this was all discovery. We've been out at the park, we've been asking questions, we've been talking to people, so we just want you to know that that's where we are right now. All right, Paul, could you come over here? I almost said, can you come over here, hun? I almost did that. Animal control guidance. Hmm? Uh, did I miss one? Oh, I mean, I wanted to look at one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to have Paul give a uh, quick tour of the website. I'm going to get the website up here, Paul. Sure. Um, but I wanted Paul over here so that our friends at home can hear him better. The website is friendsofcdp.org. Friends of C is in cat, D is in dog, P is in Paul. Dot org. And we are on the main page right now for those of you who have dialed in with a link to your computer and you can follow us at home if you're on with your uh, phone. Paul, what would you, where would you like to start? Uh, we'll just scroll down the page and hit stuff that we can uh, hit real quick. Um, we're going to have some sort of blur at this point. Hopefully it's going to be smaller coming in, in the future with just the highlights of things coming up um, and things we want to talk about. Right now, this is basically a introduction introduction to the Friends group, uh, the Friends board, um, and how it differentiates from the DPAC and the CDA. Um, and we did this mostly because there were so many questions about that and so many worries, and we're not worried at all. You know, we've got two really solid groups here that are working for the park and the community, and we couldn't be happier. We really couldn't. So we put some information there on our front page, and as Paul said, that will change. Um, the donate button doesn't work yet. We're going to be working on that this week. Um, we have an about page where you can see a little blurb about each of the board members. Um, right now, it's just scrolling through them. Oh, there we go. So this is everybody with our dogs. There's no picture of me because I couldn't find a good one with both my dogs. Um, <laughs> and my dogs look better. Um, <laughs> So um, yeah. So this is this is the five of us. Um, go ahead and read it when you want to. Um, we wrote our own little blurbs. Um, okay. Then after that, we're gonna have a little section here for sponsors. We're gonna go out and look at businesses. Um, it doesn't work yet. Hi Danielle. Danielle Jones is a sponsor. Um, where we're gonna put links to sponsors, like if Zesty Pizzas wants us to sponsor us, we'll put a link to Zesty's Pizza at this point, and that's a pay for thing. Um, so if there is a dog walking service that wants to advertise their services, they can be a sponsor, and it'll be in this area. Uh, the next section is Ask Randy. This is an area that you can send an email or a notification that'll go right to Randy about a question that you need, that you would like follow up on. Um, so that goes directly to Randy. The next section is to subscribe. I'm gonna be changing that to be a link to our member site that we'll go over in a second. Um, then there's a thank you, and then our calendar and a, and a map to our park. So if anybody has doesn't know how to get there, they can go to the page click on the map, figure it out. Where would you like to go to next? Um, let's go to the top. Under home, there's an agenda and notes section. We are going to be putting the agendas up here before the meetings 
so people can look at them to see what's coming up. And then we're going to put our meeting notes here as well. And any other major thing that we want to get out there that people want to look at and that we feel that they should know. Um, right now, there's only today's agenda out there. Um, we don't have to go over these, but there's a link to um, the rules and regs. Um, I kind of took what's on the CDA site and massaged them a little bit. Um, the, it's a lot longer than the site on the CDA page because I tried to explain why some of the rules exist. Um, and we'll go through, um, these will change as they need clarification, updating, did I miss something that needs to be up there. Um, these are things I need to know about and I welcome feedback um, to be able to fix things that are missed. The next is the first draft of our incident report. Um, this is simply a way for people at the dog park on their cell phone can get information about the other dog involved in the incident so that they have it to fill out their reports. So instead of trying to find a working pen, find the paper in the kiosk, <laughs> they can just pull up this website. Um, the top section is your information, then it's the other dog's information, because you already know your own dog's information. Um, the dog's owner's information, and a description of the incident. What happened? And then you say submit, and what happens is this, this form will send you the information that you included up here in your section with your email. Um, the friends group will do nothing else with this data. Um, long term, we're gonna use it as a statistics thing. Oh, we saw this many incidents in the park of this type. But all the personal information, who's involved and stuff like that will never be discussed or disclosed. <laughs> we have a skeptic in the crowd. Not from the site. <laughs> um, next is the member area. Um, here is a place for the members to come in. This is where you're going to manage your account. Um, this is where you're going to go to pay your annual dues, find out things about it. Um, this is where the budget currently is. If you want to go look at the budget on your own, it's in the member area. The only thing required to become a member area is signing up. There's no charge for it, but it puts you on our mailing list, which is why I want to capture it that way. Um, that's more or less the website. There's going to be more coming. I would appreciate feedback from anybody about what's currently there and what you would like to see there. Um, so that's more or less all I've got on the website. Thank you. Okay, um, we're gonna move from the website to animal control guidance and rules. So um, we recently, yes. um, we met with the DPAC um, with regard to you know animal control and there had been some question about um, what the expectation should be for response time if there's an incident and the owner contacts animal control, uh, what should the owner expect in terms of the turnaround and response? And Eric Merrill, who is the animal control officer, said that the guidance is if it's an emergency, um, the person calling should get a, a response within 20 minutes. If no response comes within 20 minutes, call the police department and ask for the, uh, the officer in charge um, because DPAC's not available or you can't get back to them. He said that somebody should be down there within 20 minutes though. Um, if it's an incident that is a non-emergency, say there's um, a complaint that someone has about another park or, or goer's dog or whatever, um, Eric's instruction is that you will get a response back within 24 hours. Um, we recently had um, uh, some feedback about park owner's dog um, and the, the guidance that Eric gave us is that if it's an issue for you um, you have to call the, the animal control officer and he will come down and observe 
what's going on in the park and take whatever steps are necessary. So that's the guidance that's been given to us. Again, Eric stressed during that DPAC meeting that if people have issues, whether they're urgent issues or other, um, that require animal control, don't put it on Facebook, don't complain about it in the park. If it's a legitimate issue, contact animal control. And that's the only way that these issues are gonna get resolved. So that is the guidance. Yep, thank you. And we did talk about the report on the website. Yep. Um, we're gonna move to social media. Yeah, for social media, we have our Facebook group. Uh, we're trying to get more moderators for it, as we mentioned before. Um, the, uh, we're trying to keep it positive, um, non-political, um, talking about issues and discussing issues is fine. Attacking people, not so much. Um, so if you don't like the idea, talk about the idea, not the person presenting the idea. Um, we've started Instagram, Instagram that Jared currently runs, and he's likely to continue. If Jared, you don't like the drama, just come over to Instagram where it's only pictures. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no commenting. <laughs> yeah, so we just post daily pictures of the dogs and events and yeah, the videos. Uh, Lauren, Scout's owner, is also on that page with me just because she's there at different times. And and she's yeah she's involved that that way too. So we're uh, I think about 115 followers now. We've been going just for a couple of weeks. So wow, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, we also have a Twitter account that's relatively new. Um, you can find it out. Uh, there's a link to it on our webpage. There's also a YouTube channel. Um, so this thing this this meeting is going to be on our YouTube channel. Uh, the Twitter is going to be relatively quiet it's going to announce things like that the cda just has a pet cpr class so i retweeted that on our site um, our meeting information was put out on twitter it's going to be simple things like that i'm not going to be using it for anything major um, if the park's closed it's going to go out on twitter the park's going to be closed this time to this time if you want more information, go to Facebook or website or whatever. Um, so I'm not using it as a, oh, look at my daily weather report. <laughs> that's what Facebook is for. Um, so that's most of the social media platform. Um, we're gonna try and get some of the feeds to come in for like uh, Instagram, so we can like do, do a slideshow through Instagram on our website. Um, if something really nice happens on Instagram, we might tweet it out. Um, so that's more or less the social media. Good, and why don't you tell a little bit about the spring cleanup? We got spring cleanup coming up. The park's gonna need it. Um, a lot of people have not been picking up <laughs> after, uh, after their dogs this winter, not wanting to trample through snow or for whatever reason, so that type of stuff needs to be picked up. Um, in general, spring cleanup stuff, um, there are things that need to get painted and touched up and things like that. So we're going to be building a list for that. And we're going to be looking for volunteers to come help. Um, we're going to prioritize things on a, this requires the park closed. Let's do these first through, okay, those are done. Now we can do things that the dogs are in the park for. Um, just so. Uh, to be determined. Yeah, the question it being asked is, is there a date for the cleanup? And we're, we have not determined that date yet. So that's about it for that. Um, All right. More information will come out. And by the next public open meeting, we will definitely have a date by then. Thank you, Paul. And Carly, the future. The, the future, future is yours. The future, OK. So one of the things I'm really, really excited about is um, our, our Facebook page and the uh, amount of traffic that we're getting through the Facebook page. Um, it opened up, opens up some possibilities for us to raise money for the dog park by monetizing our Facebook page. And by doing that, we're looking at going out to local businesses and asking them if they would like to be a sponsor of the Chumsford Dog Park. Uh, for a donation, we will run an ad on our Facebook page 
um, for a period of time. So we're still working out what the cost will be to the local businesses, but we want it to be low enough so they think, okay, this is super cheap, but you know, enough to keep them coming back and running an ad maybe monthly or whatever and rotating them. And again, they can link to our website you know, we can link them back and forth. But this is really good traffic for them. Um, a lot of the people coming to the dog park patronize these businesses and would like to know, <coughs> hey, this this place supports Chelmsford and, and the dog park. So that's in the future. We're working on that now. And anyone who has any ideas about that, please reach out to me. Um, would love the help. Uh, another thing on the, the futures is our tree installation. And we have our friend Jim here to... Um, Jim, talk to us. Can you tell us a little bit? But I need you behind us oh, so the people I know so the people at home can hear you. They want to hear about our trees. You won't break the camera, no. So, okay. <laughs> let me just set the table for everyone. Yeah, my name is Jim Lark and I'm with the Chelmsford Tree Committee. Uh, the uh, dog park reached out to us, <laughs> wanted some help as far as trees were concerned. Uh, I think you folks realize you need some, some shade out there. So we came up with a little plan. You all have a copy of it. Thank God for Google. Uh, you can look down and you can see it calls for 10 trees. This is what is in the budget. So one, one thing follows another. Also looking at, uh, we're planning on an irrigation system. No sense putting trees in if they don't get watered. That will be handled by uh, another company. So we've got 10 trees. Uh, we're recommending Princeton Elms, which are, this is a very difficult site. The soil compaction out there is some of the worst that I've ever seen. Plants don't like soil compaction. So we're trying to put in something that will tolerate the environment. Uh, uh, where, uh, well, you can see the blue is the irrigation lines. The trees are set up against, primarily up against the fence, so they won't be in the way. Uh, but again, they're primarily set up for shade. The next page shows a little sketch on uh, the planting. Uh, looking at putting a fence around it. Plant, uh, trees don't like a lot of soil compaction and dogs and people will compact the soil. <laughs> so we're looking at that. We're looking in an area about 10 by 10 with a uh, steel fence around it. Keeping the dogs again and people away from the tree. We want the trees to survive, do well putting on a cap of about three inches of wood chips. And we're also gonna add uh, about a foot of soil because again, the soil is so compacted. That is gonna be quite a project. Yes? Uh, so, right, so you're saying that you're looking at the fences around the trees to protect them? Right. Okay, sorry, just wanna make sure I got that. Yeah, and it'll just be covered over with wood chips the irrigation will be underneath the wood chip, so you won't even see it. And uh, we're looking for uh, to do this planning-wise probably sometime in April. This is going to require quite a bit of work from you folks. Uh, we'll have about 30 cubic yards of soil to move, 10 cubic yards of Wood chips, this is going to require a lot of labor. Any other questions? Now, again, this is a plan. It's, if you're unhappy with it, you've got suggestions or whatever, now is the time to do it, to ask or say something, rather than after it's all done, oh, gee, I wish. <laughs> Jim, how many, how many people do you think we need as volunteers for this project? You're going to need quite a few. We're going to have to sit down and see what kind of equipment we can get, but it's going to take wheelbarrows, shovels, you've got a tight space. I'm not sure if we could use heavy equipment in there or not. A bobcat might be useful. 
again with a boot operator a couple of things that um, people are going to want to know is how are we paying for this uh, evidently there is a line item in the uh, budget for the uh, from the Stanton Foundation right yeah from the original Stanton right. Foundation monies yeah uh, they, they're gonna be paying for that and the other question uh, was when the trees get installed initially how tall are the trees the trees are going to be about the diameter of my thumb they're not going to be very big small trees establish much quicker they are much easier to work with particularly with uh, you know volunteers so I'd say they're probably six to eight feet somewhere in there uh, if you want to see what hopefully what the trees will look like after about eight years Go take a look at the two trees on the front lawn at St. Mary's Church, 25 North Road. Those went uh, helped the Boy Scouts put them in, I think it was about eight years ago. And they are fairly substantial. This is a, a fairly fast growing tree, so. Great, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, I know in the original plan we were gonna get metal um, rounds around the tree, you know if that's still in the plan? I hope not, because they're expensive and they don't really do well. I thought they were already cut. I don't know if that's yeah. just... Yeah. No, I, 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 I we'll don't. find out. <laughs> Nobody's mentioned that to me. <laughs> but it's been brought up before. Yeah. And, uh, I want to know if that's still in the plan or if that's right. All right, we'll find out. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Jim. You. That was great. Trees. Let's hear for trees. trees. All right. So we're on to drainage. Yeah, What's Carly is going to talk a little bit about the ongoing drainage saga. Yes. So um, I am the chairperson for the drainage project, and um, we had a couple of quotes in from um, service providers. Uh, we, we don't have a really good idea of how to tackle this drainage issue, so we decided to start from square one and bring in engineers, um, particularly um, grounds and um, landscaping engineers who understand how water flows and things like that. I do have to say that, although it's been a little bit mushy, the flooding has not been nearly as bad as it's been in the last couple of years. But um, this spring, we're gonna have um, engineers come out, take a look at what we can do. I think we were, we were thinking that we could throw a lot of money at it and, and, and fix the problem, but I think it's, it, it's a multi-pronged problem. It's, it's, it's the, this compacted soil. It's the grass, it's the drainage, it's you know how the water flows. There's a lot of things going on, and we just need to start all over again. The money is still set aside for the drainage project, which is great. We may not have to spend as much, we may need more, but let's, let's do it the smart way and just get an engineer out there and have them look at it and, and give us their best recommendations before we pay someone to do anything. So that's still yet to come. Um, fundraising, I think it says Rachel, Actually, before we do that, um, do you know how much is in the drainage fund? $3,062. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so we've Set got three. separately from any operating budget. Yeah, so we're at a 3000 We've heard anywhere from, you know, depending how much the town helps, you know, zero to 8000 So, and it may be multi-pronged. We may do phase one, and it may cost $6,000. And we all agree, we want to raise the extra 3000 to do whatever determines phase one, knowing there will be a phase two down the road. So right. until we get information out, we're just gonna keep it as um, is right now, but we are gonna have some people smarter than us come out and take a look at it. And then we'll get that information to you very quickly. Yes. Um, fundraising. Sure. Everybody, this okay. is Rachel. Hi. We are inheriting her from our fundraising past. So Rachel, Hi. take tell us what you're up to. Okay, so um, fundraising is working with budget, and we're kind of trying to well, decide necessarily uh, what we're doing. We're, we've got a <laughs> bunch of ideas going around. Um, we really enjoyed having our two big summer events, the 50-50 uh, in the June, and then the spare change September. It was really, really successful in August, and it was or in September. And we brought in a lot of money, and we thought that that was a really good indicator of how much we can raise. And we're doing that, we, we wanna keep continue doing that at the end of this, the beginning of the summer and the end of the summer. So when people are coming in with all their new puppies, 
hey, come on, come support the park, we're really fun. And then towards the end of the summer, hey, come support the park, it's gonna snow, we need to plow it. Um, so trying to do those two as kind of our bigger events, and those are our just for fundraising. Um, we still have um, some of the t-shirts and we're going to sell those. We're gonna kind of work with membership to make sure that that's working. Um, we've been thinking about different types of merchandise. We haven't really settled on anything. So if anyone has any ideas, we are welcome to your ideas. Um, we've been given quite a few items yes, to sell by yes, Jackie yes. and Deb. Oh, cool. That are in the barn. Yep. Um, so just kind of trying to gather everything up. Um, if you are, you have suggestions or you want to come talk with us, that's great. We haven't really set up a, um, a committee meeting or anything yet. Um, mostly because I wanted to see what was going on with y'all first before I said, hey, we're going to have a meeting. Because that makes no sense. <laughs> Um, if people are interested and they want to help out with fundraising, they want to help out with events, I'm sure that we can make another link on the website. Right, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> For fundraising, you. yes. I'm, sure you <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. We're really in the planning stages, the yeah. same as the rest of the board. So. Yeah, but I wanted people to meet you. So. Okay, hi. Say hi to people at home. Hi, people at home. <laughs> Sorry, I look weird. I came from work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's our future. What do we have next? All right. Um, next, uh, we're turning things over to you. I want to remind everybody again that in the future, if you ever want a quick response or things to be registered within the board, it's Randy Barth at friendsofcdp.org. So that's the Ask Randy part on our site. So please, you know, we're making us available 24-7. So if I can't answer it, I'll forward it to somebody who can. And we want to make sure that all that information gets disseminated back into the park so that we have an open communication and everybody is talking about this great place. So um, it is now quarter to eight. We're 15 minutes ahead of schedule. Or no, we're on schedule. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to see if there's, uh, the chat room's open if anybody wants to put anything in the chat to ask a question. Uh, did anybody, before we go into the bag, does anybody have anything they want to suggest for great ideas or something that they want to make sure we want to put on our table to work on? Uh, so right. one of the members who uh, is in the audience just suggested that we have some pictures of the board members up in the kiosks at the park and more information about what the board is doing and also had some information for our mission statement which she sent to us which is a great thing if uh, you want to add to the mission statement you can always just send it to us on our website or to ask Randy so um, that was excellent yep, good timing. Do you want to go through the bag and see if there's anything so, in the bag? Just to tag on to what you were talking about, um, about our photos and everything. So we, we do really want to support that idea of our community, our dog park community, um, and having ambassadors for the dog park. So we're going to buy lanyards that the ambassadors can wear so that people in the dog park will instantly recognize, this is a person I can talk to. They can either give me direction on what I can do, who I can talk to, or if they need help. So. Um, again, if folks are interested in being ambassadors for the dog park, please let us know because we want to give you a lanyard and, you know, wear a little business card or whatever has your name on it. It certainly does help when you have to walk up to someone and say, excuse me, but you can't come in here with, you know, a, a, an infant or whatever. You know, you're not just somebody telling them they can't do something. It kind of gives you some, somewhat of an official role within the dog park. So if you're interested, anyone on the phone, please reach out to us and let us know because um, we, we do rely upon everyone's help to make sure that the rules are adhered to and that everyone's safe in the park. Carly, are we going to be wearing lanyards, the board members too? Yep. All right. Yeah. Can I have two because I'll lose one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it sure. to Chewy. And that way. Oh, that's a great idea. Put lanyards on our dogs. The, the, the lanyards have arrived via Amazon laughed at me ordering them at our meeting yep. right there at my house. Go Amazon. They're bright yellow. Bright yellow. So over our codes, you'll be able to identify us in the park. Oh, that's something great. Something you can just keep on the dashboard of your car, so whenever you arrive at the park, you just put it on. A suggestion was made that um, we would have in the kiosk uh, for new people coming to the park for the first time a little brochure type thing 
that welcomes them and says some nice things about the park. Lauren? I do believe that the CBA had put um, rules that they think some of that does exist in at least on the large dog side the office. So I, I know that was something that was important to them. So we will make, make sure we maintain those good practices that they had. But, but, some, <laughs> but, but perhaps some kind of indicator to go toward those things maybe is what we, we need to look at. So I, I wanted to make sure I give them credit because the, some of those things that we are in the park. Yes. So thank you board members. Thank you. All right. Thank you everybody for thank coming. You, and thank you guys at home. Thank you guys for coming out. On the we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yeah.